Let's talk more about sticker shock, not just with uh, the price of, I mean, food, everything. I, I, we're focusing on food because everybody wants some. <laughs> Let's bring in our expert panelists. We have economist Dr. Ernst Coupe Jr. He's been with us all morning long and professional grocery shopper Matthew Teas. Thank you so much for being back again on Wording in America. Now, Ernst, we've seen, of course, all these price hikes. Uh, we want to put some on the screen here. Food is costing a lot more money. Beef has gone up over 14 percent. Eggs have gone up nearly 23 percent. I've noticed the difference. I happen to try to buy organic as much as possible, and it's just through the roof. So let's give some optimism here off the top. There are some signs from economists that inflationary prices have reached their peak. What are those signs? One of the signs that we look for, um, it's, it's, it's like a, a math function, really. It's, you, you look at trends. So we have what's called the core inflation. Core inflation is inflation that's measured taking away food and energy. So if we subtract those, you can see that the, the logic is if the other things are stabilizing, mm -hmm. that means that, yeah, it looks like all the other problems, so wages have been factored in, things are starting to, so you, then you add in the food. The food is sort of, uh, you know, up and down, up and down, Volatile. up and down. Right, so when we look at inflation in terms of a long-term inflation, the core inflation gives us a good sign. That seems to be stabilizing, so that implies a maximum is about to be reached or has been reached. So we may be reaching our peak of prices and then the only place that they can go is down uh, to kind of correct for the times that we've been in that have been very wobbly. But you're saying other factors in the economy are starting to stabilize. Yes. The supply chain seems to be stabilizing somewhat too. In addition to it, we know that the Federal Reserve Bank has been increasing interest rates, which is going to cool off the economy. So not much money is flowing in the economy anymore. Credit cards, interest rates on credit cards are beginning rise mortgage rates the market housing market is actually starting to reach its max and starting to taper off so with that said it tells us that the money subtraction contraction from the economy that the fed is trying to obtain is working okay well we'll keep the hope alive there one more question for you ernst uh, russia and ukraine account for 24 percent of global wheat exports 57 percent of sunflower seed oil and 14 percent of corn exports what could be the ripple ripple effects especially here in america uh, those products that you just mentioned are what we call input, input factors to a lot of production functions of various parts of the economy. So as the price of input rises, the output price will also, the cost rises, meaning that either they're going to cut back on, on the supply or they have to charge more. Yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about grocery shopping, because this is something that kind of puts us all in the same playing field. We all need to go to the grocery store or order from it. So, Matt, uh, Matthew, uh, a percent of the people that we polled in our News Nation polling, they said that many of them cut back on purchases. Seventy percent of those responding cut back on purchases over the past month, with over half trying to save on groceries. What are ways that people can really practically save on grocery shopping? Really, right now, it's the things that you should have already always been doing, not just this year, not just during the pandemic, like your whole life buying food, just saving money is good, and not just when stuff's expensive. So uh, you really want to start focusing on your waste. People waste about 40% of the food that they bring home, and that's usually going to come from your produce and your bread. So if you're not eating all of your produce, stop buying so much. If you're finding your bread's getting moldier, stop buying so much. They have half loaves now, a lot of different options. There's a lot of competition in the food market right now. It's starting to, again, cool off a little bit as the money's being taken out of the system. So the competition, take advantage of it now with some of those products uh, and test them out because you'll see lower prices. But right now you want to start with focusing on your home waste, eradicate that. Um, and then see where you can maybe cut some costs. You said meat was going up, it's anywhere from 14 to 20%. Same thing with butter, one of my favorite things. Super expensive, eggs as well. Uh, see if you can eliminate that from your diet for a little bit or build a whole meal around something that's much cheaper. Like if you can do like a Costco rotisserie chicken night, you know that's gonna be $5.99. Some sides, whether canned or frozen, you can get a whole family meal out of that. I mean, I eat the whole chicken myself, but <laughs> You know, uh, but you're a growing boy. Yeah. And I eat it throughout like <laughs> hours of a dinner. So you, know, you just want to kind of change your habits and keep an eye on stuff and then have a strategy. You're not going to find everything at the same store. Inventory is coming back a bit, but it's still not quite there, especially with the war in Ukraine. We're seeing pasta shortages, things like that. You want those fun shapes. I'm not going to really be able to find it for you right now. You're going to get some penne usually. 
<laughs> um, so you just want to kind of look for some other options, see if you can cook with legumes. And like I said, with a competition, that competition is going to be in these interesting food areas, like simulated chicken nuggets or kind of the organic type fights of like the new milks, things like that, next milks. They're going to offer online digital coupons, a whole bunch of stuff to take advantage of. So definitely do that. Just keep your eyes open, have a plan, and watch your waist. And shop around really quickly. Are people buying generic brands more? Yes, huge increase in popularity of generic brands, even myself personally. I used to be a name brand guy, like I could taste a difference. Nowadays, you really are getting really good at not being able to taste a difference when you're talking about even like cereals, an Aldi brand versus a name brand. But when you're talking about like these cool new sauces and things, you know, like Kroger Mariano's has these new burger toppings and jams and all these different stuffs to use. And they're usually at a lower cost because of transportation costs. They're not, you know, coming across from great distances to get it into the shelves. But so they're still tasty. Still when before, generic brands were kind of sketchy. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying. All right. Thank you to Matthew and Ernst for being here. As always, we appreciate your time and for your answers for viewers' questions. Thank you so much for watching. Make sure to click on the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.